بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين All praise is due to Allah the Lord of the worlds and we ask Allah Ta'ala to raise the rank of our Prophet Muhammad the seal of the prophets and to protect his nation from that which he fears for them. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, we are going to talk about this important chapter, which is knowledge before action. Ulama, the scholars of Islam, in their books such as Al-Bukhari and others, they wrote a chapter and called it باب العلم قبل القول والعمل which is basically knowledge before action and sayings before you pray, before you perform hajj or any of the obligations you have to know the whereabouts of the matter Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم once entered the mosque and he found a person praying. He wasn't doing the prayer the way it should be. When the man finished, he said, as salam to the Prophet. He said, as salamu alaykum ya Rasul Allah. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam replied the salam by saying, wa alaykum as salam. Then the Prophet added, ud fa salli fa innaka lam tusalli. Go back and repeat your prayer. The man went back and did what he did at the first time. Once again, he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. The Prophet replied the salam and then he said to him, Go and repeat your prayer. The third time, the man did what he did in the first and in the second time. Once again, the Prophet said to him, go and repeat your prayer. The man said, I do not know more than that. O Prophet of Allah, teach me how to pray. The Prophet wasallam taught him how to pray. And then the Prophet said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. You should pray the way I taught you, the way I'm doing. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. That is why it is important to know how to pray and how to do all the obligations in order to establish a sound worship, act of worship. Allah Ta'ala commended us with matters and we must comply with what he commended subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala said qū anfusakum wa ahlīkum nāra wa qūduha an-nāsu wal hijāra This ayah in surah at-tahrīm the meaning of the ayah is O you who believe protect yourselves and families from hell fire which is fueled by people and stones Hence, every accountable Muslim has the obligation not to engage in anything until he knows what Allah Ta'ala ordained as lawful or unlawful about it. What is halal, what is haram, what is valid, what is invalid about this act of worship. Even during Hajj, you might see people doing wrong things because of their ignorance. They did not learn how to perform Hajj the way it should be. Even in this dunya, when you open a business, you have to be knowledgeable about business in order to establish a successful business. You have to know the whereabouts of the business. Before you drive car, you have to learn how to drive car in order to drive cars. 
other than that, one would be at a risky situation when he's driving the car without knowing how to drive cars. It is too risky for him and for others as well. Imagine if a person who is ignorant is leading the people in the prayer where he does not know how to pray. And it happened before. Many people claim that they are knowledgeable and they know how to pray and let people in the prayer where they are ignorant and they do not know how to pray. Allah Ta'ala made the selling lawful and the usurious gain, riba, unlawful. The lawful selling is that which satisfies the proper integrals and conditions. Selling in general is halal, except for the selling which does not satisfy the rules, the conditions and terms. In the Quran, Allah Ta'ala said, وَأَحَلَّ اللَّهُ الْبَيْعَ وَحَرَّمَ الْرِبَى Al-bay'a, the selling. This is called definite article, the. It's not a. When you say a man came, you did not specify who came. It's a man. It is unspecified. But whenever you say the man came, you meant a specified man. So this selling which Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran is the type of selling that satisfies the conditions and terms. Which means Islamically, any selling which does not satisfy the conditions is considered unlawful in Islam. For instance, selling insects in Islam is forbidden or selling perhaps grapes for the one who is going to make wine out of it. It is also unlawful in Islam. Even if he gave money for that boxes of grape, but in Islam it is unlawful to do so. Such type of selling is unlawful because it did not satisfy the conditions and terms. Even if you are hiring someone's services, you have also to know the whereabouts of that matter before you engage in such a dealing between you and a trade person, for instance. A riba, which is nowadays known as interest, and it is of three types. The most famous type is riba al-qard, which is the interest out of borrowing and lending money. If a person came to the other and asked him to lend him money, if he said, I will lend you money with a condition that you pay me more, this is called riba. It could be of an additional amount of money or it could be anything that generates an interest. Such as, I will lend you money, but I'm going to borrow your car for one week for free. This is a type of interest and it is Islamically classified as unlawful haram. However, if the borrower paid an extra amount to the lender, because when he asked him for money, he gave it to him. He was nice. So in return, he gave him more money than what he should do. Such a matter, it is not considered as an interest because there was no condition stating so. He paid him an extra amount. Or maybe he invited him to have dinner with him. Or he took him for a holiday and the like. Such a matter is not considered as haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the truthful trade person shall be assembled on the resurrection day with the prophets, highly ranked righteous Muslims, Siddiqs, and martyrs. We are referring to the awliya, 
because the term Siddiq it means a type of awliya there are certain levels in wilaya whenever we say a wali we meant a Muslim who fulfilled all the obligations and who avoided all the prohibitions major and minor and he performed an act of non-obligatory worship consistently he will be classified as wali adda al-wajibat ishtanab al-muharramat wa aksara min al-nawafil walaw min naw'in wahid this wali could also be elevated in ranks if he performed more acts of worship he might reach this level of a siddiqiyya such as Maryam alayhi salam the mother of Prophet Isa alayhi salam became a waliya when she was 14 years old only she reached such a status a siddiqiyya she became one of the highly ranked awliya and Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam used to visit her he used to visit her during winter time and he used to find with her fruits which are only available in summer and whenever he used to visit her in summer time he used to find fruits only specific to the winter time it is a type of karama which Allah Ta'ala bestowed upon her so look at that merit At-Tajir al-Saduq yuhsharu yawm al-Qiyamah ma'an nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada this trade person the one who satisfied all the Islamic conditions in his dealings with the others because of complying with the rules of the religion on the day of judgment he will be assembled with those highly ranked Muslims the prophets look at that merit someone to be assembled with the prophets and also the awliya and also the shuhada because he fulfilled what he must do on the other hand the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam mentioned in the another hadith inna tujjara يبعثون يوم القيامة فجارا إلا من اتقى الله وبر وصدق which means those trade persons on the day of judgment will be assembled will be resurrected فجارا the term فجار meaning sinful person in a shameful manner إلا there is an exception man Allah, the one who fulfilled all the obligations avoided all the prohibitions not only in his dealings with the others but only in general illa man wa wa he was truthful in his dealings with the people in the past it happened that a Muslim trade person he used to sell fabric material and he had some second-hand quality which he kept aside he marked it as second-hand quality because it has some defects it's not the first quality he kept it aside and he put the good quality fabric material on the other side a man walked in his shop he looked at this material the second-hand quality without asking the seller about it he said how much for that he gave him the price he paid him the money he took it and went away after a short time the seller who was a Muslim realized that he did not explain to the buyer about these products that it has defects and it is classified as second-hand material he left his shop and he went after him until he arrived to that destination where he found the man the buyer he looked at him and said I am the seller 
the one who sold you the fabric material which you bought of me the buyer said yes what about it I paid you your money and I owe you nothing the seller said to him it's not the case I'm not coming to you asking you for money but I did not explain to you about the quality it is a second-hand quality and it has some defects and because I did not show you the defects I did not inform you about it that is why I came all the way over to you to give you the choice if you want your money back you're most welcome if you want me to give you discount or to explain to you about it and you agree about it it's up to you you have the choice the buyer looked at him and said you left your shop all the way and came to me just for that what made you leaving your shop coming over to see me and to give me the choice the seller said to him I am a Muslim and it is a requirement in my religion that if I am selling something which has a defect I should show you about it I should inform you about it because I failed to do so that made me leave the shop and coming all the way to you the buyer said you must be following the true religion what religion you are then the man said I am a Muslim and my religion Islam informs me to do what I did the man said to him could you tell me how to embrace Islam the Muslim said to him you have to testify that no one is God except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Alhamdulillah the man uttered the two testifications of faith while believing in it and he became a Muslim then he gave the seller another amount of money the seller said to him why are you giving me money you already paid me the money why are you giving me money again the buyer looked at him and said the money I gave you is a fake money and that is why I'm now compensating for your loss so he gave him money and because of his honesty and truthfulness the man became a Muslim so out of these good manners this person who was not a Muslim he was a non-Muslim at the time when he first entered the shop he became Muslim because of the truthfulness and the trustworthiness of this trade person the man embraced Islam this is the way it should be to show the others the beauty of Islam and how we are practicing our religion so it is very important to abide by the rules of Islam whether you are dealing with a Muslim or non-Muslim it does not matter cheating is haram with both Muslims and non-Muslims stealing from Muslims and non-Muslims is also classified as unlawful haram it does not mean that because this person is not a Muslim that we are allowed to steal him or to cheat him or to deceive him and the like we should be in one face not double faced the threat of Allah Ta'ala to punish those who violate his laws is known there is a severe punishment for those who did not comply with the rules of the religion cheating and the like subhanallah among the remaining contracts are renting articles and hiring people's services if you want to rent a unit or a car and the like also you have to know the rules if you are opening a shop which you are renting cars out to the people you have to know the rules if you are also hiring someone's services a carpenter a builder and the like you have also to know the rules of Islam about it 
whether you are hiring someone's services or you are a trade person and someone is going to hire you. You have to know and he has to know also the rules of Islam. For instance, if you are going to do some carpentry work at home and you hired a carpenter, you know that the carpenter needs timber to work with. So whether you are buying the timber for him or he is going to buy it for you, you authorize him to pay for the timber he's buying. It is your money or sometimes it's his money. So you have to be clear. Anyway, if you paid him money and you said this is the money which you need to buy material with, it could be screws or nails and the like, it is your money and he should be looking for the best bargain for you. You gave him the money and you said buy with this money the material you need. You have to work for his benefit to find the best and quality and price. And the leftovers, it is not used, it is his, because it is his money. You cannot say, take it, he doesn't need it. No, it's not used. Now if he authorizes you to buy the material on his behalf and you use your money, you can sell it for him for a higher price. You paid $200 for the material and you sold it to him for $300. Can you do so Islamically? Yes, you can. Because you used your money and you sold him for a higher price. You made a profit while selling the material. And by doing so, the leftovers, it is also not used. It is his because he paid for it in full. And you have to be specific in differentiating between labor and parts. You can't say Islamically, the job costs you $1,000. You did not show him, you did not show him what is your laboring amount and the materials or parts. You have to be specific. It costs you $200 for labor and $200 for material, for instance. Then you specified it. Such a matter is fine. There is a clarity about it. Now, if you did not agree on a price and later on, when you finish the job, the man said to you, how much I owe you? You said, $800 for instance and he said $800 you overcharged me in this case you have a dispute between each other what is Islamically the solution you as a trade person only entitled to get the normal market value of your labor the normal market value of your labor what is the normal charge that everyone charges average in average this is what you are entitled for only as a trade person because you did not agree on an amount of money it was hidden so that is why it is important to know before you engage with that trade person to know about the prices in labor, material, and the like. Now, if you needed more material, once again, you can authorize him, authorizing the trade person to buy it for you using his money, your money, but you have to be clear from day one. Trading with another person's money for profit sharing, this is called qirad in Islam. For instance, I have money, but I do not have time to trade with. And you are a trade person. I can give you my money. This is $10,000. And you can sell and buy using my money for profit sharing. Then you and me will be sharing the profit. 50-50. 
That's fine. That's called qirad. But once again, such a dealing also comprises of certain conditions which should be known before you are engaging in it. Commissioning a person to act on one's behalf. This is called wakala. You commissioned him, authorized him to sell things for you for a certain amount of money and the like. Once again, you have to know <coughs> the conditions. Entrusting a person with property for safekeeping. This is called like amana. Lending an article for use. <coughs> Partnership. You are opening a business with a partner. It could be 50-50, it could be 30-70 and the like. And also you have to know the conditions when you are opening a business and you are sharing this business with one or more partners. It could be three, could be four. And then tending, which is watering grapes or dates for part of the crop. Once again, if you are going to be involved in such a dealing, you have to know the integrals. One must also observe their conditions and integrals. Now, if you hired a person to paint the house for you, and you agreed on a price, $3,000, and Allah Ta'ala knows best. You bought the paint for him, and you set up the laboring cost, $3,000, you agreed on the price, you and him, and he painted 80% of the house, but he did not continue. He only painted part of the house. He did not continue painting the rest. Is he eligible to ask for what he worked for? Religiously, he is not eligible to ask for any dollar. Because the condition says that you have to paint the whole house, not 80% or 70% or a certain percentage. Since he did not comply with the condition, Islamically, he is not eligible to ask for any dollar unless he completes what you agreed upon. The whole house to be painted, not part of it. If you paid him the money, it's out of generosity. But otherwise, Islamically, you are not obliged to pay him the money if he did not complete it. He did not finish the job. We ask Allah Ta'ala to increase our reward and to end our life with Islam. Amen.